In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's really strange, isn't it, to be celebrating Palm Sunday alone in our homes. Uh, some of us with just a few people, some with nobody, uh, doing this alone. That's not usually the way Palm Sunday's done. We usually do it with a, a parade and a procession and lots of people marching through the church, right? Not this year. But I'm somebody that actually likes crowds, and so I really miss the great procession of Palm Sunday. I like outdoor concerts. Um, I really enjoy fairs and parades. I like churches when it's packed elbow to elbow uh, on a Sunday morning. Now, my wife Sue, not so much. In 1986, I thought one of the best things we could possibly do would be to go to Washington, D.C. on the 4th of July and see the Beach Boys play a concert outdoors at the Lincoln Memorial. Sue wasn't sure. She said, it's going to be crazy there. It's going to be a madhouse. I said, oh, we're going to have a ball. We had two little kids at the time, right? They were, what, let's see, four and seven. We'll just take them there, and we're just going to have a great time. So we go down. And I didn't realize that even parking was going to be miles away, and that when we got there, I mean, I've been in crowds, but there were over 500,000 people there for that concert. Fortunately, they simulcast the whole thing on the radio, and so I've got a little radio in my hand that I could hear the music because I couldn't hear the live music. We were way too far away. We couldn't see anybody. It was really disappointing. But I would have really loved that parade on Palm Sunday, that great procession into Jerusalem. I would have loved that day. Everybody gathered. They were coming in for Passover from all over the Near East and the Middle East. A great parade. I mean, you can just feel the press of the people as they're gathering on the road from Bethany into Jerusalem. You can smell the dust kicked up by everybody's feet, the donkeys. You can probably pick up the smell of Maybe the unmistakable order of people not uh, haven't washed in a while as well, and in too close a space. But you can sense the excitement in the air that day. And you might even climb a tree so you can get a better look. You tear off a palm branch and you jump down and everybody's singing. And you start waving the palm branch too. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. It's a great time. It had to be. But I want you to imagine, too, what the disciples were thinking that <coughs> How excited they were. And the hope that they had. Because this wasn't just a normal parade. They had hope that finally, here was the Jewish king who was going to come in and push Rome back out of their country. They were going to be freed of Roman oppression. So this wasn't a normal everyday parade. This was special because there was freedom in the air. Well, the disciples wanted this to be a very royal procession, and so they take their cloaks and they, they lay them over the donkey so that Jesus can be comfortable sitting on there. And the road, you can picture it now, just jammed with pilgrims and locals alike. And they take off their cloaks and they put them on the ground. They put them on the road. They take palm branches and they lay them out so that the donkey coming in carrying Jesus is walking across these cloaks and the palm branches. See, they were thinking about something that had happened just a hundred years before that. That's the last time they were out from under Roman rule. Another leader in those days had come forward. His name was Judas Maccabeus. And he led them to victory over the Roman armies that were there, and he became their king. And they had freedom. He was called, he had a nickname, they called him the Hammer. And the palm branch was his symbol. And so when he had coins made, it had a picture uh, impressed of a palm branch on his coins. And they used them at temple feasts. Anytime they celebrated his victory, it was always with palm branches being waved. Well, this time the crowd rushed to grab palm branches again because they thought it was the same thing. 
here's the next king that's going to free us from Rome. And so they were expecting that same kind of military victory. You can hear their cheers, Hosanna. Hosanna is a, is a Latinized word, but the original Hebrew would be translated, save me, save us, help us. That's what it means. Help us, son of David. So as you picture this scene, remember, it doesn't end with the parade that day. As Jesus finally gets to the city, he gets to Jerusalem, all the people are taking notice. Matthew said the whole city is stirred up. And they're asking. You can just picture it in the crowds. Who is this? Who is this? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Oh, it's the one from Nazareth. He's here, Jesus, it's him. So everybody's asking, who is this coming in that's getting all this attention? And that's the question for us today. Same question. <clears throat> who is this? Who is Jesus and who is he to you? Who is he to me? See, the problem with those palm branches is that once, once you cut those branches, once this branch is cut, it immediately begins to die, and they don't live very long at all. Just to keep these here in the church, we've had to keep them refrigerated and moist because they will quickly dry out, and they will die. And that's the problem with palm branches. And you see, the problem with Palm Sunday is that the excitement of that crowd soon faded, and it died out, and by Friday, the same voices that were saying, Hosanna, save us, we're saying crucify him. He's not going to do what we thought. He's not going to have a military victory. Crucify him. See, their love for the Lord was so shallow, wasn't it? It was so shallow and based entirely on the hope of what he would do for them. If they were going to be free. There were not going to be Roman soldiers on every street corner anymore. They would not have to pay the burdensome Roman taxes anymore. Let Jewish law govern us, not the laws of Rome. And when it wasn't what was good for them and what they expected, well then, they were out of it. Crucify him. We're not so different sometimes, are we? We're quick to get behind Jesus when he's on the way to that throne. But we kind of fall by the wayside when we realize he made a turn and now it's headed toward the cross. We're slow to obey a suffering servant. We'd rather be following a powerful king. But let that not be us. Let that not be you and me. Let's not be that shallow. Okay? Let's not be so shallow that we wave palms one Sunday a year, sing hymns of praise, but then refuse to obey the servant king that we call master. See, that king has a life ahead for us, for you and me, and, for, and a purpose for us. It's true all the time, but it's really true, especially at a time like this. A time when we are in the midst of a worldwide crisis. At a time like this, it becomes so vividly clear that none of us knows how long we're going to be here, do we? We don't know how much time we have. And it's not just because of the virus. But how about the young girl, 14 years old, Diana, over in West Deer last week, who burned up, burned to death in her home? She's a friend of Mary Garrison's. Her parents took Financial Peace University in this church. How about the friend of Rebecca Roberts, 12-year-old boy named Jake, who just died suddenly over in Mars last week, and we don't even know what killed him. None of us know what the future holds, but we do know that God has a purpose for us between now and then. He calls us to love him and to love others, kind of love that will make a difference in the world we live in. He calls us to speak truth. He calls us to reach out our hands, to hold out our hearts. Yes, even willing to touch the leper with love. And he calls us to do that now. See, when the world says, hide away 
Just take care of yourself now. We as God's people are called to reach out, to extend love, support in whatever way we can do it, as safely as we can do it, but to do it. Every single one of us with our own gifts and our own abilities to reach out to others in need. Every one of us. You know, sometimes we think, well, you know, someday I'm going to be a lot more obedient than I am nowadays to the Lord. One day I'm going to really show that I'm truly committed. Someday I'm going to really focus on serving Christ. But I'm so busy now. Someday I will. You know, after all this scary virus stuff is over, maybe then I can, I can get back to trying to be a really committed Christian and follow Jesus. Brothers and sisters, the day is now, right now. And it doesn't matter who we are or how we do it. Because we don't know how many more days we'll actually have. What do we do between now and then? What will our life be doing to make a difference? Will we choose to follow Jesus, a servant king, wherever he leads, even when it leads to a cross? If so, I want you to take that palm branch you have today and just put it behind a cross on your wall in your home. Put it there, and every time you see it, think of how you are going to continue to serve him by reaching out to those who need you. Every day, we ask the Lord, what is it that we can do? And as I was praying about this and just looking at uh, some of the great leaders of the church over the years and how they looked at this passage, at this, uh, at this idea, I found a passage from Martin Luther, a letter that he wrote. This was written during the bubonic plague in the early 1500s. It had, it had come back and it had stirred up again in Germany. And this is what Luther wrote. He said, I shall ask God mercifully to protect us all. And then I will fumigate, purify the air in my home, administer medicine, and take medicine. I shall avoid places and persons where my presence is not needed in order to not become contaminated myself, and thus perchance inflict and pollute others, and so cause their death as a result of my negligence, if God should wish to take me, he will surely find me. But I have done what he has expected of me. And so I'm not responsible for either my own death or the death of others. However, if my neighbor needs me, I shall not avoid person or place, and I will go freely. Because this is a God-fearing faith. Because it is neither brash and proud nor foolhardy and it does not tempt God. So let us not tempt God either. But when we see a neighbor in need, let us go freely. Amen.